uh, like, how do you think that this new IMAX theater will change the movie going experience for the viewers in Lubbock compared to the other theaters? Um, well, it's not a matter of comparing because there's not another IMAX mm -hmm. theater here in town. The the Omni opened quite a while ago on there, and, and uh, the problem that they have uh, over the science spectrum is that they never dreamed that they would have an opportunity to be showing Hollywood films. So they they have a uh, a limit on uh, uh, their, pro their projection equipment can only handle a movie that is about 45 minutes long. Mm -hmm. uh, so that limits them to just the you know the nature documentaries and the, uh, the the documentaries that they really they want to show the most on there. But there have been some major films that they want to show, like Fantasia and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the other theaters go, um, it's, it's just going to be a matter of whether people want to go ahead and pay, you know, twelve dollars for a movie ticket, and uh, and whether it's it's worth that to them to to see, you know, James Bond or The Hobbit or something like that on uh, on a forty foot tall screen. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. You know, I, the only the only IMAX movie that I ever saw was was the one about the Alamo down down in San Antonio. Uh, yeah, the Palladium. I, yeah, I have not seen a, uh, an, uh, a a Hollywood feature on an IMAX screen, so it's new to me as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure everybody's going to be blown away by the experience to begin with on there, but uh, I'm just not sure whether it's going to make a, that big a difference for everybody to, they're going to want to line up and just see the films on the IMAX. I'm sure a lot of, of people will. Mm -hmm. uh, because we've already had calls on why isn't uh, Cloud Atlas, you know, showing on the IMAX screen, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's one of the Hollywood films that was formatted for that, uh, but uh, uh, Premier did not get the rights to that movie. So I think, especially in the beginning months, I think it's going to have long lines for it. Mm -hmm. People will really want to go see it, and the fact that they have two big films opening on November 8th and December 14th with uh, uh, Skyfall and, uh, and uh, The Hobbit, uh, they keep those big films coming in like that, you know, I think people will... I think people will go see it, um, mm -hmm. uh, or try to go see it. But, mm -hmm. you know, we've got 420 seats in there. It's a it's a large theater, so uh, it'll take a it'll take a lot of people for each screen on there. And, yeah. and uh, I'm not sure how it will uh, affect uh, uh, affects in the market. I think the, there's enough people in town here that whoever else gets uh, Skyfall and whichever other theater gets, uh, and it'll be Tinseltown uh, uh, because. Uh, getting off track here, the premiere will not show the same movies as movie 16 mm -hmm. and vice versa. Uh, I think Tinseltown will do just fine. I, I, I don't think the IMAX is going to kill them uh, by any means. I think it's something that people in Wellick have wanted for some time, though, so I'm glad we have the option uh, for them to uh, choose where they want to see it. Yeah, I'm from I'm from the Bernie, San Antonio area, oh, yeah. so that puts like 10 minutes away from where I live, so it's, it's always busy still, so I mean... Yeah. Um, what uh, what extra anonymities does this theater provide that the others don't provide? Well, there's there's a ton of them on there. Uh, the IMAX is the most obvious, mm -hmm. but then you also uh, you have a, a, a bistro slash restaurant downstairs, and you have a, a lounge slash bar in the balcony area. Uh, or upstairs, mm -hmm. uh, and on both of those, you're able to take your your pizzas and hamburgers and chicken wings and everything else, and your margaritas and your beer and your wine, which is the only alcohol they're serving. Uh, you're able to take all that into the theater. Mm -hmm. So that's something that has not been available at the other theaters here in town. And people have wanted an Alamo Draft House or something along those lines for some time. Um, uh, Let's see, they have Starbucks coffee, they have Blue Bell ice cream, uh, they have uh, you know, a party room that you can rent, uh, gosh, uh, <laughs> but I guess those would be, the, oh, they have D-Box seating, mm -hmm. which is the, uh, the motion simulation seating where we've got just 24 seats in one theater that are, that are hooked up by computer, mm -hmm. uh, they have the same uh, keyword on there is we'll hook it up to a certain movie and if the movie has a car chase or an action scene then you're at the, the chair is actually moving to make you feel like you're in the scene really? 
and, uh, and seating for that is seventeen dollars. Mm -hmm. You can go to the movie and sit in the D box seat. So all the bells and whistles are there now. Yeah. You know, I can't think of anything that this theater doesn't have, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, we'll have even reserved seating for the D box seating, and uh, I don't know whether that will go into reserved seating sometime in the, in the future for, for regular theaters mm -hmm. uh, or not. Uh, some people want that because of the fact that they have to get tickets ahead of time, they have to come back early in order to get a good seat. Mm -hmm. uh, so reserve seat probably the next year or so, who knows. Okay. Um, I, I saw that this it's gotten delayed, like the opening date has been delayed a couple times and like pushed back. Um, do you know like how, do you know how much it cost and or like took uh, like how long it took to build? Um, I don't know how much it cost. It took over a year to build, which they didn't expect, mm -hmm. Be and that's mostly because what they wanted to do coming into the mall is they wanted to uh, uh, to level Mervins. They wanted to go ahead and knock that whole building down, mm -hmm. and the mall did not get permission for that. So, what they were doing was basically constructing a new building where there was an old building and then moving and then building it on out mm -hmm. and they ran into all kinds of problems in terms of, you know, uh, they had to refurbish steel, they had to try to make a, you know, uh, they had to match up a lot of stuff, what I understand, in terms of, you know, putting a, a new roof on the old building, and they ran into a lot of complications. I mean, at first it was going to open in the summertime, mm -hmm. uh, then it was going to, then it moved from, uh, I mean, they wanted it to open for, for Dark Knight Rises, uh, in July, or I guess that was June, and then they wanted it to open at the end of August, and uh, and it kept moving back even further on there, and then I figured if it didn't open by August, there was no sense opening in September or October on there, mm -hmm. because they'd wait for the big films to come out uh, uh, in November and December, so uh, I guess the October 26th opening on there is, is what they went for, but, but uh, yeah, they would have opened it sooner if they could, okay. I mean, and as far as the... Uh, the cost of the uh, of the building on there, I asked them that, and they didn't they didn't want to share that. Okay. Um, will there, uh, to your knowledge, is there going to be any additional police presence here because it's the grand opening weekend? Uh, they've got tons of security. First off, you know they've got eighty cameras in that place. That's something else that wow. the don't have. Uh, inside and outside, and a lot of those cameras are hidden. Um, so basically, they're 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 making sure that no one's going to leave the theater and get attacked in the parking lot. There's not going to be anything uh, like that. Now they have uh, on the weekends, especially I guess they're going to have Lubbock Police Department. Uh, they'll have off-duty Lubbock Police Department officers uh, hired to handle security. Most of the theaters uh, uh, use off-duty Lubbock Police, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's going to be anything. Uh, any more police in terms of the? I'm, I'm sure that they'll 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 schedule police uh, schedule security basically on the basis of how many people they're expecting, and I'm sure they're expecting big crowds for the, for the first few weeks. Um, but I don't. Uh, you'd have to ask uh, you know uh, Rudy Leal or Gary Morris about the okay. uh, presence for security there. Uh, I know they're very concerned with it. Uh, they're very concerned with uh, with the lighting. They've worked things out with the mall so that uh, all of the and that means all of the entrances to the mall will stay open until 30 minutes after the last movie ends. So no matter where you park your car at the mall, you'll be able to walk through the mall, go back through those doors, and go back to your car. Um, which I think is a great thing for them to do, especially during the holiday season when the shoppers are going to be struggling to find a parking space. And like that, there's no telling how far away from the theater you'll have to park. So you don't want people having to walk through the parking lot that, uh, that far. Yeah. Um, is the movie theater, I guess from what you're uh, saying, the movie theater is accessible through both the mall and the parking lot to yeah. the side, correct? It, it's accessible through the mall and also through the the, uh, the west side of the uh, mall, the, the parking lot area there. Okay. Uh, so you can, you can be shopping and go down where Mervyn's used to be and the pet shop and stuff like that and, and uh, Radio Shack, all those places that are very warm. Uh, go there and, and, and enter the theater that way or you can enter the theater from the parking lot you're still going to have to, still going to, have to go to the uh, box office which is in the center of the lobby mm -hmm. okay. um, 
Or they have kiosks both inside and outside the doors so that you can go ahead and buy your tickets uh, uh, before you enter into the theater. Okay. Um, the, I, I guess this, uh, the theater, it only offers the reserved seating for the IMAX as of now, correct? But not no. regular, or is it? No, the reserved seating is not for the IMAX, to my knowledge. The reserved seating is just for the D-Box. Okay. Uh, the D-Box is the motion simulation seats. The IMAX has 420 seats, and I think it's first come, first serve. Yeah. Yeah. But I do think they are going to go to reserve seating at some point in time. So the, the D-Boxes are in the IMAX, though, right? No. Or they no, aren't? No, the D-Boxes are in just a regular theater. Okay. On there, and in fact, uh, I think the first movie that's being shown in D box is uh, the Sylvester Stallone movie they brought back. The uh, one Sylvester Stallone. Uh, oh shoot! I, sh I should know this right offhand. I'm not like that since I reviewed it. Oh, it's the E something or other. What is it? The Expendables. The Expendables Part oh, Two. Okay. That's it. So, it's it's basically used for action movies and for uh, uh, car chases, things like along those lines. Or when they had the uh, when they showed it to the, the media, they they had a uh, a clip from the Polar Express where the train was coming down the hill and onto the ice, mm -hmm. and they had a clip from Fast and Furious, and a clip from Fast and Furious worked a lot better. Okay. Um, besides. Uh, gain like, a bunch of local interest among like uh, Lubbock residents. Is this theater like gaining a lot of national interest? There's a well, I don't know about national interest. There's there is interest in the national film industry just okay. because of the fact that the studios have been reading about this and have been hearing about this theater for a long time, and they want to check it. They want to check it out. They've sent people here for the grand opening. Or excuse me, the VIP, the invitational opening, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. uh, on Thursday night. It wasn't open to the public. But um, the studios wanted to check out the IMAX. They, it, it, this IMAX theater is one of the largest in the state. And uh, uh, they, they want to check out, I, I think, just the whole look of the theater and the V boxes and everything else. And, and uh, uh, because it will make a difference in terms of, you know, when the, when the theater chains are bidding for films, you know, the, the, the certain. Studios, certain directors have the power to go ahead and say, I, mean, I want my film to be shown, you know, in this theater or something. Mm -hmm. uh, that started with Spielberg and the, and the uh, Indiana Jones films. How would you compare this theater to the other ones that you've been to and covered for? Um, well, I mean, I, I grew up in Denver and went to high school in the Dallas area on there, so I've, I've been in big theaters, mm -hmm. you know, before. It's not the IMAX theaters. Um, it, it's it's a it's a it's a top line theater in terms of uh, in terms of comfort. The, all the you know they've got the rocking chairs and throughout the building and, and uh, uh, it, it's a couple things that, you know are new to me. I, I don't know how much I'm going to enjoy having everybody in there eating and drinking. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm really old school, you know, and, and somebody was. Uh, already commenting that if people could eat with their mouths closed on there, you wouldn't mind. <laughs> but the idea, and for me, it was just a matter of, of uh, yeah, I could just see being in there with a dollar in my pocket, you know, and smelling chicken and pizza and everything like that during, during the yeah. movie on there. So I'm not sure how I'll, I'll react to that, but everybody says it's a it's a wonderful experience being able to do that, and, and I've got plenty of friends in Austin and Dallas that do that all the time. Um, and the other thing is just you know, there'll be some people that want to go to to movie 16 or Tinseltown because they won't want to deal with the mall. Uh, especially we're coming up on Christmas, which is not bad, you know, and, and there's plenty of parking back there, you know, don't get me wrong, they will have parking for anybody that wants to see the movies, but you're going to have to deal with a little more traffic, leave a little earlier, you know, and, and uh, park a little farther away. Uh, so as far as, uh, you know, comparing it, you know, uh, as far as comfort, you know, I'm sure that it's going to be... Uh, uh, the other theaters in town here, you know, you know, are pretty comfortable. Mm. You know, 